I'm the nutty chicken lady that sort of had this, I don't know, this uh, light bulb moment about uh, people adopting cats and dogs and other animals. And I suddenly thought one day, why not chickens? And we're here because um, we thought it was a good idea, really, to get some chickens. Although, I have to be honest, people have put us off. <laughs> <laughs> rats! Oh, You'll have rats! That's right, people have told us we'll have rats and red <laughs> mites <laughs> and <laughs> lots of teeth and, you know, you'll regret it. But they give you that kind of look when you go well, to get what chickens. What they say, they go, they go, they go, you get, yeah. get chickens. Oh, they're lovely, but... but. They have to fake an exhibition bowl trip. <laughs> hey? That looks like it was comes from the 40s or 50s. Well, exactly. I, I couldn't believe it existed. Me and my friend went up to Scotland. <laughs> we called off in uh, Northumberland somewhere. And I saw that in it. I said, have I seen things or what? And the Victorians and that, they used to put chemical potions in and all sorts. Really? And, oh, yeah. What, 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 one man, Alexander Palace, he got dye on his coat, mm. which proved it. You know what, what he, they were he, doing. He'd been dying as chickens. Are, yeah, they are to fake an exhibition poultry. Never even met a chicken until I was in my thirties. Not in, the, not in with its feathers on. Um, but I just, I was aware of the the, um, the battery cage industry, um, having seen Panorama down in, in, in the, uh, down in the factory farm in 1979. And uh, it was from that point that I I just wanted to do something for chickens. So you had to far, have to fast forward to the to 1995 when I first moved to Devon, and I went on the hunt for a, a battery farm. And I just went, you know, literally trawling country lanes until I found one. And uh, I just politely asked the farmer, can I have some of your birds, please? And it went from there, really. Hello, my name's Martin Gurdon. I'm a motoring journalist who keeps chickens. And this is Richard the Cockerel. Richard is a Brahma, so he's a, a Victorian fancy chicken. Uh, and he quite fancies himself, actually. I mean, he sort of looks a bit like Beau Brummel with spurs. She's called Topsy, and Topsy came out, she was very injured when she came out, within four weeks she was determined to live this little bird, she had two very bad legs and a broken wing, within four weeks she was determined to get around and look for worms in the garden, now I have a job finding her, she's all over the place and living a very, and she's lovely, she'll come, she'll sit with us when we're having coffee outside in the garden. Never even met a chicken until I was in my 30s, not in, the, not in with its feathers on. Um, but I just, I was aware of the the, um, the battery cage industry, um, having seen Panorama down in, in, in the, uh, down in the factory farm in 1979. And uh, it was from that point that I I just wanted to do something for chickens. So you had to far, have to fast forward to the to 1995 when I first moved to Devon, and I went on the hunt for a, a battery farm. And I just went, you know, literally trawling country lanes until I found one. And uh, I just politely asked the farmer, can I have some of your birds, please? And it went from there, really. You've that... got one of these uh, sticks that you put strategies on. What do you call them? Cocktail sticks. Cocktail sticks. And it was going underneath every scale on its leg. Every scale on its leg without getting the scale Now, there's a quicker way than that, but putting Vaseline on. And, 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 and getting it right, but that just shows the extent that some people will go to. On a couple of occasions I've uh, bent over to collect some eggs from our bantams and seen a fast approaching cockerel charging my bottom. And I had one little bird that was like a penguin, um, that was Vicky, and the other hens were just trying to kill her in essence, and it was the friendship that I built with Vicky that really kick-started the charity, because I had no idea that you can build a, a friendship with a chicken like you can with a cat or a dog or a horse or any other animal that you care to sort of put the time and attention into. Um, so that, that's kind of what started. I did it for probably about four or five years, um, just going to literally a slaughterhouse then. I found a better way of doing it was going direct to the slaughterhouse and I would quite literally take a tin of Quality Street, ask the guys to um, load my van with their crates, um, my little mini metro, sorry not my van, and I would take home sort of 50, 60 birds every year. We've learned lots of new words like um uh, what was the oh what's the wortle no what was it called wattle wattle wattle, wattle. Oh, wattle. wattle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and today we're rehoming our seven hundred thousand pounds right from day one when I decided
decided I was going to try and expand it. I decided I was going to be very, very polite with farmers. I wanted to do it very differently to how any other organisation had done it before. Not about berating the industry, I wanted to work with the industry. Um, and I, I got some local PR and that generated local support. Volunteers started coming to me. And then I, um, I had a letter. I got letter of the week in the Daily Mail. And it was from that that I started getting calls around the country. And I was talking to people on the phone that I'd not met, but just sort of screening them as best as I could to make sure I kept out any um, extremists. And it was from that that I started linking them to local farms. And from that point, we started uh, building waiting lists of people that wanted to adopt hens in the area. And, you know, the model was built very quickly, actually. And year on year, from the first year that I started, I pretty much doubled on hen numbers year on year for about the first five or six years. It was crazy. But great, crazy. We've got over 800 amazing volunteers. And this is not just an ordinary volunteer job. You don't just go along for a couple of hours. You know, we ask our volunteers to get up at five in the morning, go to a farm, work really hard, get covered in sort of, you know, chicken feathers and probably a bit of poo and a few red lights. Um, and then we asked them to sort of come back and load the birds and, and sort of go through the whole of the adoption process um, where people come and, and, you know, sort of take them Sorry, sorry, have I disturbed you? I'm sorry. Just wanted to change that. We cover from the top of Scotland down to the East Coast, across to Wales. Um, yeah, we do, right down to Cornwall. It's amazing.